An average of 34 billion naira internally generated revenue is what the Lagos state government has been generated monthly in 2018 compared to monthly averages in the last three years. Now, this and more were captured at the ongoing annual ministerial press briefing to mark the third year anniversary of Governor Akiumi Ambodi's administration. The Lagos State Annual Ministerial Briefing enters the fourth week running as heads of ministries and agencies appear to give account of their stewardship and the performance of the ministry from May 2017 to April 2018. The Ministry of Wealth Creation and Employment comes first. The ministry, which was formed shortly after the inauguration of the present administration, has among its mandates to create sustainable wealth for Lagos citizens. The office initiates, formulates and executes policies for all wealth creation and employment related matters. The commissioner in charge of the ministry reports that over 1,000 artisans were retrained between May 2017 and April 2018 under the Tradesmen and Artisans Capacity Building Scheme. The capacity building scheme was to equip the participants with technical and entrepreneurial skills with a view to enhance their efficiencies, competitiveness and productivity. It was held for eight weekends across the state in five different centers, which are Agidingbi, Adosoba, Ekwe, Ikotsu, and Ikorodu. In addition, 40 members of Lagos State House Paint Association were trained and engaged by Kansai Plascon Nigeria. The ministry oversees the distribution of 6.25 billion R employment trust fund to support small and micro enterprises annually. In fulfillment of Lagos State Government mandate, the fund has now disbursed 5 billion, 222 million to 6,462 6, beneficiaries out of the approved loan, totaling 5.98 billion for 8,229 8, beneficiaries received. Next is the Ministry of Science and Technology. The ministry deploys information and communication technology a major instrument used by the state government to enhance service delivery and to bring about innovation for the development of the state. The commissioner explains how his ministry is deploying the technology needed to drive the Lagos State Smart City Initiative in the period under review. The first phase of the Lagos State Smart City project will seek to address security, transportation and infrastructure. The second phase will also continue to address security, transportation, and connectivity in a sustainable manner. The security component will deploy thousands of surveillance closed-circuit TV cameras through the length and breadth of the state. The transportation component focuses on intelligent transport services, and its connectivity component will provision, with provision of metro fiber network through a major internet service provider that will eventually lead connectivity to various homes, offices, institutions, and institutions in the state. Lagos State Consumer Protection Agency. For the Ministry of Commerce, Industry and Cooperatives, the successful hosting of the Lagos Kano Economic and Investment Summit and the biannual Lagos Means Business are among various engagement programs through which it churns out policies and projects that have the propensity to stimulate economic growth. The Commissioner's report focuses on two major projects, the development of the Lekki Free Zone and the Lekki Deep Sea Port. In the bid to upgrade infrastructure across the state, she says that the Lekki Free Zone project continues to attract foreign investments, leading to more job opportunities, adding that about 264 billion naira worth of finished goods have so far been exported in the last three years. To date, the joint venture with the Chinese consortium has a total equity investment of 180.4 million US dollars and 140.20 million US dollars foreign direct investment. We have the U.S. 200 million FDI expected for consortium of Chinese investors. We have the 376.5 million Nigerian Naira spent on 14 CSRs projects for host communities. We have 3,000 hectares of land still available, while 241.3 hectares have been utilized. 125 total investors have registered to date. 
59 total investors have their lease agreements ready. 726 Nigerians have been employed by the free zones. Active participation of host communities in these project contracts and bidding process are being done, thereby providing additional indirect employment. We are the Ministry of Finance also had its turn. Part of its core mandate is to monitor all state revenue sources and determine the funding priorities of the state cash supply. The Commissioner, Mr. Akiyemi Ashade, reports average performance in internally generated revenue. Based on our first quarter results, Lagos State has still achieved an average monthly IGR of 34 billion in 2018. Compared to monthly averages of 22 billion, 24 billion era in 2015 and 2016, and 30 billion in 2017, respectively. We expect that as we continue to implement, to implement the various reforms driven by wider technology adoption, Lagos State IGR should potentially rise even further, thereby providing much needed resources to fund further infrastructure projects across the state. He gives an update on the revised land use charge and federal transfers since Lagos joined the League of Oil Producing States. Federal transfer which comprised value added taxes and other statutory allocations received in 2015, 2016, 2017 and Q1, quarter 1 in 2018 amounted to 116.892 billion, 123.534 billion, 141.7 billion, and 38.481 billion, respectively. Furthermore, since we joined the League of All Producing States, the total revenue from the 13% derivation paid to Lagos State Government to date amounts to 197 million and 130 million received in 2017 and Q1 2018, respectively. The steady rise in revenue from federal transfers is largely due to higher than normal forecasted international oil prices, which have been rel relatively stable in recent times, as well as stable crude oil output during the period. The Commissioner says he's optimistic that the internally generated revenue, IGR, would rise as the state continues to implement various reforms driven by technology innovation. He expects that the target to grow the state's IGR to 50 billion naira by next year is very much on course. And that's how far we can go on this edition of the program this week. We hope to conclude the ministerial reports by heads of ministries and agencies in the next edition, which will also highlight activities marking Democracy Day. Remember to hook up on our social media platforms showing on your screen. I'm Loretta Chiogo. Bye-bye now.